The evolution of mole-like animals has occurred many times throughout the history of life, and today there are several lineages of living animals that all look incredibly mole-like. I recently made a video about every time things evolved into moles through the phenomenon of convergent evolution, where organisms that adapt to live in a similar environment or perform similar behaviours end up converging on the same anatomical features. Well, I'm afraid I must issue an apology because it wasn't quite every time that things have evolved into moles. There are actually a couple of other very mole-like extinct animals that just slipped through the cracks. I was already so surprised at quite how many times moles evolved that I somehow managed to miss these ones. So to make up for it, I've decided to do a whole video dedicated to these animals. I truly hope you can forgive this appalling oversight of mine. Anyway, what other mole-like animals am I talking about? One of them is called Docophossa, and the other Necrolestes, and they are both fascinating animals. First, let's take a look at Necrolestes. Fossils of this strange little mammal were first described back in 1891 by legendary Argentine paleontologist Florentino Amagino. The fossil came from rocks dating to the early Miocene epoch, about 16 million years ago, in the Santa Cruz province of Argentina. At first, the only part of the skeleton that was recovered was a lower jaw, but it was still enough for Amagino to name it as a new species, Necrolestes patagonensis, meaning Thief of the Dead from Patagonia. More remains were recovered in expeditions between 1896 to 1899, and described by another paleontologist in 1905, this time including multiple skulls, jaws, and many parts of the body skeleton. This is when the long debate over the classification of the animal began, as Necrolestes clearly had a very strange anatomy that made it difficult to figure out what it was. This animal had once again converged on the mole body plan, with an elongate, upturned snout that would have been useful for shoveling soil, poorly defined orbits and a small optic opening in the skull suggesting reduced eyes, fused neck vertebrae, and forelimb anatomy strongly indicating digging adaptations including what might even be an incredible convergence on the golden moles. These Afrotherian moles actually have three bones in their forearms, instead of the two that are standard for most other mammals, including ourselves. In addition to the radius and ulna, they have an ossified flexor tendon, basically a tendon that has been turned to bone, and this extra bone might be present in Necrolestes too, as it looks like there might be a preserved bit of one. Necrolestes also has a curved process on the ulna, called the olecranon process, which is another key giveaway for being suited to digging. Recent study of the ear region has also shown that the middle ear was increased in volume, suggesting enhanced low-frequency hearing, very useful for life underground. But these super-specialised features of Necrolestes, combined with its unusual mixture of other anatomical traits, meant this little mammal proved to be a nightmare for paleontologists for over a century, as various different classifications were suggested for it. At first, Necrolestes was proposed to be a member of the African Golden Mole lineage since their anatomy seemed so similar, but later researchers disagreed and placed the mystery mammal as a member of Insectivora, which is now an outdated order of mammal groups or as a marsupial, a xenarthron related to armadillos and sloths, and even as a paleanodont, the stem group pangolins that I talked about before in the mole video. After much back and forth between these various positions, paleontologists in 1997 took things even further and suggested that Necrolestes was not even a therian mammal, the group that includes all placentals and marsupials but not the egg-laying monotremes, the echidnas and platypus. But then paleontologists in 2007 once again found support for Necrolestes being a therian, but they still weren't sure if it was a placental or a marsupial. Also in 2007, a different group of paleontologists actually named a second species of Necrolestes, calling it Necrolestes mirabilis. This species was based on a few teeth and a tiny fragment of jaw, and it also extends the range of the genus back in time a bit, since it was found in a formation dating to between 21 and 17 and a half million years ago. Then, the classification of Necrolestes finally became a bit clearer in 2012, when more paleontologists took another shot at working out what kind of mammal it was. After having prepped a bit more of the skull material to reveal more details of the inner ear, and making comparisons between Necrolestes, and some recently discovered much older Mesozoic mammals from Argentina, they realised that this animal was something pretty special. Necrolestes was in fact neither a marsupial nor a placental mammal. 
It was non-therian, as had been initially suggested in 1997. It actually belonged to a group of mammals named Meridiolestida, which had only been first recognised in 2011. Meridiolestidans are an entirely extinct group and were primarily known from late Cretaceous deposits, though some species from after the end of the Cretaceous, when the famous dinosaur extinction happened, had been found. Necrolestes, however, was by far the youngest member of this group, extending the known range of these mammals by 45 million years. Also in 2012, another group of paleontologists independently came to a very similar conclusion after separately studying the Necrolestes material. They also found that Necrolestes was a Meridiolestidon, but positioned slightly differently with other members. Still, pretty amazing that they also came to this conclusion on their own too, and certainly strengthening the case for the classification of Necrolestes in this extinct group of non-Therian mammals. Several subsequent studies have since further supported this placement for the mole-like mammal, and even more preparation of the fossils has revealed more features of the brain case, ear, and nasal region that support the classification of this mammal as non-Therian. So, after more than 100 years of debate, it seems that the mystery of Necrolestes has mostly been solved. There are of course still things to learn about this animal though. For example, there has also been some recent-ish discussion about whether or not Necrolestes would have possessed fleshy appendages at the tip of its snout, similar to modern star-nosed moles. Despite there being a few reconstructions of this mammal with these appendages, which in the star-nosed mole are covered in tiny mechanoreceptors and allow the animals to feel their way around underground incredibly effectively, there's actually no support for Necrolestes having this too. The inclination of the nasal aperture is quite different in the star-nosed mole compared to Necrolestes, and as explained by a 2017 paper, the space needed to support a proboscis like that of the star-nosed mole is just not there on Necrolestes, since it has a shovel-shaped snout instead. That 2017 paper actually goes into quite a bit of detail on the life reconstruction of the mammal, which is pretty cool and something I kind of wish more papers would do. The authors explain that Necrolestes most likely lacked external ears, as in a lot of modern specialised burrowers, and probably would also have had whiskers, since these are very useful for navigation by touch. The upturned snout, which was used in digging, probably would have had a thick nose pad with an extended naked skin patch, called the rhinarium, as in golden and marsupial moles. They say that completely vestigial eyes entirely covered by skin are a possibility, but due to the specific anatomy of the orbital region of the skull, they give their reconstruction very small eyes, as there seems to be space for them. Necrolestes also had very long upper canines that were probably used in hunting invertebrates and potentially also small vertebrates, and they were in fact so long that they would have always been exposed, even when the mouth was closed. So Necrolestes was an absolutely fascinating and undoubtedly pretty mole-like prehistoric animal. The other one I somehow managed to miss is the wonderful Docophossa. Docophossa brachydactylus was first named in 2015 based on fossil material found in China, from a formation dating to the late Jurassic, meaning this animal lived around 160 million years ago, and therefore might be the oldest very mole-like organism that we know of. Docophossa is known from a pretty complete and spectacular specimen, which even preserves traces of its fur around the skeleton and once again it displays a suite of burrowing adaptations. It has a tooth morphology similar to modern subterranean mammals, has a protruding snout like other burrowers, it possesses that same curved process of the ulna, the olecranon, indicating a strong capability for scratch digging, and it even seems to have been able to hyperextend its back feet to rotate them backwards like in modern day echidnas, which allows these animals to more effectively dig straight down into the soil. Docophossa also has only two short finger bones in each digit of the hand, and at the tips, very broad, shovel-like ungual claws. This reduction of finger bone number explains the species name given to the animal, Brachydactylus, meaning short digits. There are also muscle attachment points indicative of strong flexor muscles and strong joints, all indicating the use of the forelimbs to dig. Docophossa is also not technically a true mammal, it's a member of Docodonta, which are a completely extinct lineage of mammalia forms that only lived during the Jurassic and Cretaceous. Docodonts actually got pretty amazingly diverse even back then though, with semi-aquatic beaver-like forms known as well as tree climbers. So it might be that Docophossa can be crowned as the original mole, 
at least until we find something older. Since all other particularly mole-like animals lived long after this, they're really all mimics of the original Doko fossa, if you think about it for too long. Anyway, this mammalia form was another incredible instance of a very specialised burrowing lifestyle evolving way back in the Jurassic. Again, I apologise for missing these fantastic animals in the original video, and I'll try not to let that happen again with future videos in the Convergent Evolution series. In fact, I have a way to almost guarantee it doesn't happen again. We're now introducing channel memberships, a feature on YouTube that allows you to become a member and to gain access to exclusive members content for a monthly payment, kind of like Patreon. And we plan to do all sorts of fun things with it, including revealing what the next Convergent Evolution video will be on, so that you can all make sure I'm not very stupid and leave anything out again, by giving me suggestions for what to include. Of course, there's also going to be a lot more than just that with the memberships. I plan to do a members-only stream at least once a month, where we can casually chat about recent paleontological discoveries and go through new papers together, plus probably talk about my own research for my masters, and we plan to do some behind-the-scenes bonus videos, probably recording our fossil hunts, going through my own fossil collection, and whatever else you'd like to see. And there'll be plenty of polls for members to vote in, deciding on future topics for videos and streams. It should be really fun, I'm very excited to get started with it, and I hope it's something people will like. We've just got the one tier available for now, the Jurassic tier, but we're also very open to adding a couple more and taking your suggestions for what you'd like to see from these memberships. So please do let us know, and I hope you'll consider becoming a member. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed learning about Necrolestes and Docophossa, and I hope this extra video made up for my mistake in the original. <laughs>